Once more, welcome everyone to Cycle CTPM Personalized Learning Sessions and the third session on experiments. This is Ahmed El Yemeni, Engagement Cloud Evangelist in Cycle. So, as previously mentioned, this series of sessions cover business values and technical features of Cycle Engagement Cloud, including CTP Personalized and Marketing Automation. Through the last couple of episodes, we had an introduction about Cycle Composable DXP and Cycle Personalized. Last session, we covered experiences and different types between full stack and web experiences. In this session, we'll have an introduction about A-B testing and highlight the main aspects and benefits that you can get with experiments in Sitecore CDP and Personalize. So before we start, as a quick reminder, Sitecore got three main pillars, the engagement pillar, the content pillar, and the commerce pillar. Sitecore CDP and Personalize live within the engagement pillar, the one here highlighted in yellow. And of course, these products are composable, so they can live together or they can work well with your current technologies. For those who have watched last episodes, you will notice that there will be many similarities between experiences and experiments. For example, both of them got web and full stack versions. That's why today we'll be focusing on the differentiating capability of site core experiments. Also, our friends and developer advocacy team will be doing technical demos and explaining how to customize experiments in a session that you can find the link to in the description below the video. So if we get to experiments, we need to talk quickly about statistics. Whole experimentation generally is trying new things. So to give marketing teams the ability to try new things, CDP and Personalize give a way to try the decisions before they apply it to their front end and multi-channels and monitor the impact of decisions. And of course, adding the factor of speed so you can get results for these tests quickly. Then picking the optimum ones. These optimal approaches are named the winning experiments. For example, marketers can test would it be the longer the short form visitors prefer to complete a, reg a registration. So they run an A-B testing and get big the data that expresses which experience is appealing more to the customers and the visitors of the website. Also, before going technical, let's have a quick coverage on the fundamentals of A-B testing inside Sitecore. The concept is fairly simple. You expose a sample of future visitors to that proposed experience and see what effect each variant is having on that. Then you can declare a winning experience to be finally released on your online channel. Sounds easy, right? However, there is a challenge here. To have a confidence in the test results, you will need to guarantee enough traffic for this test. This is what's called a statistical significance, which is basically pre-test assumptions, configurations, and calculations, which is needed to ensure the winning result reflects the entire population and is not just a result of random chance. Statistical significance is the minimum amount of data you need to guarantee to make sure that the results are not random and they are really expressing the population preferences. Then I'd like to give a quick highlight on terminologies here. A-B testing is a randomized experiment, which means that we cannot manipulate which part of the population should see the experiments. That will kill the randomization concept. The next couple of keywords are statistical hypothesis testing and statistical significance. In summary, that means that tests cannot declare a winning experiment until it gets the enough number of data and visitors. The next point, which is the different types of experiments available with site core personalized A-B testing. So the product include different types of testing. Firstly, you have the A-B test, which means comparing two alternatives to each other. You also can add the N letter. So you can compare, for example, different variants. In ABN testing, you test control against many variants. It's generally more useful if you are less interested in statistics, but you want to figure out what is the winner experience across many other options. The next one is MAP, multi-armed bandits. This is an algorithm that utilizes artificial intelligence to automatically allocate the traffic to your variants. So you don't depend on statistical significance in this case, and you get a winner of the experience as quick as the algorithm figures out which experiment is performing better than the others. And last one is sequential A-B testing. It's, it's on our product roadmap at the moment. So with sequential A-B testing, you don't need to decide the sample size ahead of running the experiment. The algorithm will decide that for you, but it would not allocate traffic dynamically to the experiments based on the results. So you'll get results faster than the normal A-B testing but still, multi-armed bandit got the advantage because it would not expose your visitors to a losing experience. So you decrease the opportunity cost. Another point to remark here is the stopping conditions. So you can at any moment stop 
even even if the test didn't reach a statistical significance, you can set a stopping criteria. So your test would resolve the end result, even if it didn't reach statistical, statistical significance. Let's jump now to a few things marketers should consider or watch out for before running A-B test experiments. So like everything, we should start with planning. It would be a mistake not knowing what test we are running or why we are running it. We need to have a very clear idea on what our test plan is. Some mistakes in this stage might include testing many things together, for example. The data would be confusing. You might have many tests running at the same times, so then they would influence each other. Another one is ignoring statistical significance. So as we talked about, it might generate just random results and you will not be sure that these results express the entire population. That also applies to testing for the wrong durations. Running the tests for very long times unnecessarily might have bad impacts as running it for short time as well. Another mistake would be using unbalanced traffic between your experience. This would cause a bias towards one of the experiments and it would need a lot of time for the experiment to reach statistical significance. Also, not following an iterative process. You should be always using the output of one test experiment as an input for another test experiment to find more accurate results. Failing to external factors, for example, running your test to where there is a big sales coming up next week or something, that would definitely impact your test results. Of course, A-B testing is a great tool that gives marketers a great capability to decide what experience to expose to the users, but you need to know what tool you are using first. For example, if you use multi arm Bandit without knowing what does it mean or for what exactly it's used, this will get you inaccurate results. Let's jump now to give a quick overview on how to use experiments. So as we clarified, firstly, set up the hypothesis, essentially defining expectations and require confidence in the test. Then system will calculate for you the minimum number of sessions to draw up conclusions. The number here on the screen is 21,100 in the example. Then you add in your API response, similar to the last session with experiences, where you add your different variants. Decide the traffic allocation, which is the percentage of your visitors to see each of the variants. In the example here, it's 50-50 split. Optionally, you can have a further filter by decide which audience can see the tests. However, be aware of this because this might cause imbalance in the allocation of the experiments. And also it will severely reduce the number of visitors who are seeing the experiments. So it will take longer to get results. You can also add decision models such as giving the users dynamic offers based on some parameters in the visits or in the sessions. Then finally goals. This is a very important because this is what the system will use to calculate your winning experiment. And after running the experiment for some time, this is how experiments performance dashboards will look like in the app. So on the top left, if you have reached statistical significance, it will declare there is a winning experiment. The dashboard also will show the total numbers of days, total numbers of unique sessions that run until we reach the winning experiment. And then you'll get a visual view of the variance split out and how each of them performed against each other and on the assigned goal. Then you get more details down here, such as sessions, conversions, and uplifts, which is the difference between control and variance. And then a confidence index, which the application calculates and it gives you a notion of, if you run that test millions of times, how much it will give the same result. So indeed, experiments gives a lot of data options to the marketing technologists and data scientists through A-B testing tools. There is a lot to understand and to learn before using the tools as well. Luckily, there is always a multi-arm bandit testing, which optimizes the traffic based on the artificial intelligence tools to start calculating a winning experiment. Also working with core partners and professional services consultants here can give another edge where they provide guidance for our clients on how to use A-B testing for optimizing user journeys. With this, I'd like to thank everyone who is watching us today. Please stay tuned for the next session, where we'll be talking about decisioning, including building automated offerings and using AI inside Site Core Personalize. And as usual, I'd encourage you to leave your comments and feedback on the video below here, and please post your questions on Site Core CDP community channels. Thank you and see you next time.